What's up guys, back with another Fallout 4 Theory video, and today I figure we could talk about ghouls. Among some of the non-human but humanoid beings that exist within the Fallout universe, ghouls are the result of the radiation and fallout that was caused by the Great War. And while there are ghouls that were created in the post-war era by radiation exposure, we see a lot of ghouls from the pre-war era in Fallout 4. Now before we start, I'm going to talk about what ghouls are in this particular video, and I'll discuss whether it's actually possible to become a ghoul or not in the real world. But I suppose without further ado, let's go ahead and talk about what ghouls actually are. There's a fair amount of inconsistency between all of the Fallout games, but one thing that tends to remain consistent is that ghouls are former humans that were mutated by long exposure to radiation. Perhaps more specifically, according to the official Fallout 2 strategy guide, and I quote, Ghouls were once humans, but they were caught outside of a protective vault when the bombs dropped. In the original games by Interplay, many of the societies that formed during the post-Great War era were the descendants of Vault Dwellers. As examples, Vault City was formed by members of Vault 8, while Shady Sands and some of the Raider gangs from the first two Fallout games were formed by the descendants of Vault 15. Now, this trend may or may not continue in games produced by Bethesda, however, I would say that for the most part, most of the human NPCs you encounter throughout the games are probably the descendants of Vault Dwellers. The reason I mention that this trend may or may not continue is because there are notable NPCs in Fallout 4 like Zealot Richter who are human and are completely radiation immune. So it's possible that not all humans are the descendants of Vault Dwellers. Or maybe radiation immune humans intermixed with the descendants of Vault Dwellers to get the majority of humans that we see throughout the games today. It's also possible that radiation immunity exists on a gradient. Perhaps most humans die from lethal exposure that's needed to create a ghoul, some other humans just ghoulify, while there are those that are radiation immune that simply remain human. Either way, what is consistent is that ghouls are the product of radiation exposure, and most humans that weren't in the vaults probably became ghouls. Now all ghouls do have some notable traits. While their necrotic appearance goes without saying, the Fallout 2 strategy guide also mentions that, quote, the same radiation that turned their flesh into parched leather has given them an incredibly long lifespan. Now, this is why you see quite a number of pre-war ghouls across all the games, and as far as Fallout 4 is concerned, one of the more notable ones is the vault Tech rep that appears at the very beginning of the game. You can encounter him as a human at the beginning of the game, and then again in the vault Tech headquarters in downtown Boston as a ghoul. What is unclear is how or whether ghouls actually age or not. While it's clear ghouls have longer lifespans than normal humans, there are ghouls like Typhon from Fallout 2 that appear to have grown up as ghouls. While Typhon could be lying, he does specifically mention that he is the son of Set from Fallout 1, and mentions that he, quote, got born before the radiation hit us, so I grew up mutated. In contrast, Fallout 4 side quest called Boy in the Fridge features an NPC by the name of Billy Peabody, who was a child from before the war that didn't seem to age at all for the 200 years that he was stuck in a fridge. Perhaps like some humans' immunity to radiation, some ghouls age and mature while others simply don't. What we can be sure of is that ghouls do have longer lifespans than ordinary humans due in part to radiation exposure. At the same time, this radiation exposure and transformation into a ghoul can greatly affect a person's mind. This is why you see feral ghouls that attack humans on sight. These ghouls were people that ultimately lost much of their reasoning abilities and thus turned into what is essentially a mindless zombie. A general trend that's presented in Fallout 4 is that even the non-feral ghouls that have much of their mental faculties intact do eventually become feral. One notable example is a ghoul by the name of Rachel that appears in the Nuka World DLC, and if you listen to her holotape, it reveals that she was starting to go feral, and she also discovers that all of the ghouls eventually become feral. I think this is it. I can't go any further. I can feel it taking me. No, gotta keep it together a little longer. Oswald, I'm sorry. 
I've looked everywhere I could think, but there's no cure. All the towns and outposts I could find said that we ghouls just go feral eventually, and there's nothing to be done. It would seem this process of turning feral is pretty irregular, as you have some ghouls that still retain their mental faculties more than 200 years after the Great War occurred. Conversely, some people transform and turn into feral ghouls relatively quickly, as seen with Camp Searchlight in Fallout New Vegas. The NCR troops stationed there were only turned into ghouls quite recently, and most are feral as a result of the radiation exposure. Ultimately, feral ghouls and the possibility of non-ferals turning into ferals has led to a lot of discrimination towards ghouls in general. This is why you have specific areas in Fallout 4 like Diamond City where you can't actually encounter a ghoul, or how in Fallout 3 most of the ghouls are confined to the underworld settlement in the ruins of the old museum of history in the capital wasteland. Now, with all of this said, the NCR has established some legal protections for ghouls, which has allowed them to serve in the NCR's military as rangers. As for the rest of the wasteland, it seems possible that they will adopt similar policies over time as their governments begin to form. Aside from feral versus non-feral ghouls, there tend to be two primary types of ghouls that the player tends to encounter across all of the games. Of course, you have the regular ghouls, which can range from this typically light red or even yellowish brownish complexion. Uh, these ghouls are the most common out in the wastelands and are more able to peacefully coexist with humans in a non-feral state. In fact, the vast majority of ghoul NPCs across all of the Fallout games released so far are this particular type of ghoul. The second type of ghoul are the glowing ones. Glowing ones are ghouls that have absorbed so much radiation that they have begun to glow. Interestingly, while there are a few notable non-feral glowing ones like Oswald the Outrageous from Fallout 4's Nuka World DLC and Jason Bright from Fallout New Vegas, non-feral glowing ones are definitely a rarity among glowing one type ghouls. Glowing ones in general are more dangerous to humans as they can emit both radiation while alive and after death, and this radiation also has a side effect of healing the ghouls around them. The ability to emit radiation like this is probably why you don't see very many non-feral glowing ones at any settlements. After all, the radiation that they would emit would be too dangerous to most humans. There is also a third and unique type of ghoul from New Vegas's Lonesome Road DLC known as the Marked Men. The Marked Men are former NCR and Legion soldiers stationed in the Divide that were formed as a result of the Courier delivering a package to the region sometime before the events of New Vegas. This caused a nuclear blast where the ensuing winds tore the skin off the NCR and Legion soldiers, giving them their signature reddish muscular-like appearance. While this would have killed a normal ghoul, the marked men appeared to survive thanks to the surrounding radiation in the area. And while the marked men aren't feral, or at the very least they don't appear to be feral during the DLC, they are cannibals and are hostile to the player. Marked men may actually be more dangerous than regular ghouls and glowing ones, as they can wield any weapons that the regular NCR and Legion soldiers might carry. Now that we've gone over ghouls, it's probably a good idea to discuss how radiation affects the body. Significant or high ionizing radiation exposures can lead to a wide variety of health effects. Nerve cells in the brain can die, leading to seizures. The eyes can have a higher chance of developing cataracts. The skin can begin to develop lesions. The lymphatic system can be affected, reducing an individual's ability to fight infection. Men and women can become sterile as a result of radiation exposure, and you have a higher risk of acquiring cancer if you've been exposed to significant amounts of radiation. While there isn't necessarily a definitive point where a human being dies from radiation exposure, like there is in the Fallout games, higher levels of radiation exposure are more likely to cause death. So I guess to explain this, while 1000 rads will instantly kill you in Fallout 4, the real world equivalent would be something like receiving a dose of 1000 rads will cause a 100% chance of death within a few weeks. Or perhaps a better example would be if you receive a dose of 600 rads that has a 60% chance of killing you within a month. Of course, I guess the big question is whether someone in the real world could become a ghoul or not. While the necrotic appearance of a ghoul is probably possible in the sense that you would develop skin lesions and a decayed appearance, there is a good chance that you wouldn't become a ghoul. 
Even if you did somehow manage to look ghoul-like, you would suffer other more dire consequences of radiation exposure, particularly to your immune system which fights infection. As I stated earlier, the lack of a sufficient immune system will make you more vulnerable to disease, and that could easily kill you. And as stated previously in the real world, it's not necessarily the radiation exposure itself that will kill you, but the effects that radiation has on health cells function, which actually kills you. After all, lowered immune deficiency would make you incredibly susceptible to disease to the point where you would die. And between the brain seizures and skin lesions, among other complications, there is a pretty good chance that you would die long before you ever became a ghoul. Another common attribute of ghouls is their decaying skin. One of the reasons that humans have skin in the first place is because skin further prevents the pathogens from entering the body and is also a means of regulating human temperature. So if you've already got immune deficiency and you have holes in your skin which allow pathogens to get in, you're going to die. And I would say if that doesn't kill you, the inability to regulate your own body's temperature may cause hypothermia, which in severe cases could lead to your organs shutting down, causing the person to die from organ failure. That said, perhaps certain ghouls like glowing ones and marked men may use their irradiated blood to keep their body temperatures regulated. Now while there are cases of animals, plants, and other fauna adapting to radiation around parts of Chernobyl, the doses of radiation one would incur in Chernobyl today are generally low enough to where humans can safely visit and work for a short period of time and then leave for a little while to recover. Though I suppose it's possible that humans might be able to adapt some resistance to radiation like some of the animals at Chernobyl have, the initial exposure to much of the radiation around the plant shortly after the initial explosion would have been extremely deadly. What I think is also worth mentioning is that many of the mutations that allowed for the plants and animals to adapt to the Chernobyl area didn't result in massive creatures like we saw in Fallout. After all, I think we would know if something like Mirelurks lived in Chernobyl. It seems pretty unlikely to me that ghouls could exist, especially since the effects of radiation on humans would cause the humans to die rather than result in a significant enough mutation like we've seen with ghouls. Then again, I suppose ghouls themselves may already be dead as a result of the transformation, however they're kept alive by radiation somehow. Hopefully, we will learn more about the biology of ghouls in future Fallout games. But alright guys, I think that's going to wrap up this particular video. If you like this video, feel free to leave a like, click the bell to join the notification squad, and as always, take care, and I'll see you all next time.